Hello viewers, you are welcome to this video. Today I want us to look at how we can solve radical equations. Radical equations. When you have equations of this nature, how do you solve them? Yes. I've written two questions here. We are going to solve them. And I believe that after solving these two questions, solving radical equations should not be a problem to you at all. So let's look at them. Let's start with the first one. Solution. Solution. One to the first one. Now, I have been given this. Square root of x plus 7 minus square root of 3x minus 2 equal to 1. I have been given this to solve, viewers. Now, you can look at it this way. We have this, this one, and then this one. We have three entities here. One, two, three. Now, this is what you can do. We can decide to introduce brackets on the left-hand side. And that will be like this. Brackets, square root of x plus 7 minus square root of 3x minus 2 is equal to 1. We actually want to square both sides, but before we square both sides, we have to ensure that we have one entity on the left and one entity on the right. For example, when we have something like when we have a plus b equal to c, you can't say that a squared is a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. No, you can't say this. This one is wrong. If you have this, it's wrong. But you can say that a plus b r squared is equal to c squared. This is true. Right, isn't it? So this is what you want to do. We have three entities here. And we can start by just squaring this, squaring this, and go to the right hand side and square this. So we want to make what you have on the left hand side one entity. That's why I've put these two in, in, into brackets so that they become one entity. Okay. Now, having made them one entity, I can now square. I can now see that square root of this minus all square this is equal to one square. This is I square this side and I square the right hand side. Isn't it? So the first point is that you should make the left hand side one entity, the right hand side also one entity. So you have this here. Now, if you guys look on the board, when you have something like this, a plus b all squared, this is what it means. It is the same as a squared plus this b squared. Are you seeing it? The first one squared, the last one squared. Plus, look on the board. You see? If we are, it's going to be like a plus b, a plus b. Let me do this to so everybody can understand. This is a squared, isn't it? And then the next one, a b, so a squared plus a b. Plus this one, this time this, a b. Plus this time this, b squared. So I've written the a squared, I've written the b squared. So I'm left with these two. Isn't it? a b plus a b is 2 a b. Now, do a look on the board. So it means that this is correct. Now, let's look at how you can just write it without writing it this way or without breaking it down this way. When you have this, how can you just write this? So this is how it works. A squared, that is the first one squared. Then the last one squared. And then the middle one will be A times B. That would be AB times 2. You see, so that is 2AB. So if I use something like this, if I give you a minus b all squared, this one will be the same as a squared, hmm? then the last one will be negative b squared, that is b squared. And then this time this will be negative 2, and it will be negative a b times 2. So negative 2 a b. Are you seeing it? So this is this is going to be. So I'm going to transfer this idea to this side. Yes, they're going to apply the same concept here. Okay. So 
if they are applying the same concept, then the role of this is A. The role of this is what? B. So to be A squared, eh? this one squared. So everything here squared. And if you are squaring everything here, the square root sign will go. So it should be x plus 7. Are you seeing it? Eh? x plus 7. Then the last term, this one, this term, when you square, you square it. Because it is negative, when you square it, you positive, and the square root sign will go. So that will be 3x minus 2. Hmm? Now the middle, the middle is going to be this times this, times 2. So that will be, you see, you see this one is positive, this one is negative. So I don't know, you see, everything should be negative. You see, positive times negative is negative. So that will be negative 2. Are you doing it? Square root. Let me bring this one here. 3x minus 2. Eh? So negative 2 square root of x plus 7. And then 3x minus 2. Are you doing it? Eh? So this times this. Times 2. And we are getting that. And then this one is plus, plus 3x minus 2. Yes. And this is two call to the right hand side. The right hand side, the right hand side is what? We have an issue. Now viewers, at this point, at this point, we can decide to take this to the right hand side and bring one which is on the right hand side to this side. Are you doing it? But this one will be x plus 7 plus 3x minus 2. The one and one there comes here, that will be negative 1. It's equal to 2 square root of x plus 7 3x minus 2. Are you seeing it? Yes. And I've got the one here taking this to the other side. And because you are, you are taking it to the other side, you can't possibly. So that is this Now x plus 3x would be 4x. 7 minus 2 would be 5 minus 1, 4. So this is plus 4. This is equal to 2 square root of x plus 7, 3x minus 2. This is I see it. Now at this point, you can decide to divide 2 by 2. Divide 2 by 2, this one will be 2x plus 2 is equal to this 2 will go. Square root of x plus 7, 3x minus 2. Are you seeing it? This way. Now at this point, we can decide to introduce brackets here and make these two one entity so that you can square. Why is it? So you can say 2x plus 2. All squared. And this is equal to square root of x plus 7. 3x minus 2. All squared. Why is it? Now, if you are expanding this, then it's going to be this squared, the whole of this squared, that will be 4x squared. Why is it? And then there's this one squared. That will be 4. And in the middle, this time this will be 4x times 2. So that will be plus 8x. Are you seeing it? Yes, that will be so then plus, plus 4. Mm -hmm. So this one squared, 4x squared. The last one squared, 4. This time this will be 4x times 2, 8x. And this is 4. Now when you square this, then the square root sign will go. So that will be x plus 7. 3x minus 2. This way. Are you it? Now at this point, viewers, let's try to expand the right hand side. So this one will be 4x squared plus 8x plus 4. This is equal to, when you expand this, this one will be 3x squared. This time this minus 2x. Then write this way. 2x. This time this 21x and this time this negative 14. Are you seeing it? Now, 
Let's try to bring everything to the left hand side. This one will be 4 x squared. If you 4 x squared, when this one comes here, it will be 3 x squared. So that will make everything x squared. Right, isn't it? Now, 8x, when this one comes here, when the negative 2 comes here, or let me just say, negative 2x plus 21x will be 19x. And when the negative 19x positive crosses to be negative, so that will be 8x minus 19x, and that will be negative 11x. Are you seeing it? 4, when this 14 crosses, it will be positive. So 4 plus 14, that will be 18. So it goes to 0. So this is a quadratic uh, equation. So you have to clean this side. Let me clean this side and then continue. So we have s squared minus 11x plus 18 equal to 0. You have you need two numbers. Which when we multiply, it will give us 18. But when added, it will give us negative 11. So straight away, the numbers are negative 2, negative 9. This time, this will be 18. When you add, you are getting negative uh, 11. Are you seeing it? Yes. So you just attach s to this, s to this. So this will be s squared minus 2x minus 9x plus 18 is equal to 0. This implies that s squared minus 2x brackets minus 9x minus 18 is equal to 0. This has to be negative so that when you expand, here is negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 18. And again, you get 4 so that, so that this one will be positive. Are you seeing it? If you make it positive, it will be wrong. So s comes out here. s a common factor. It goes here x minus 2. Here the common factor is 9. It goes here x minus 2 is equal to 0. So you have x minus 2. And then x minus 9. This is a common factor. So you pick one of them. You call to 0. Are you seeing it? So this implies that x is equal to. This implies that x minus 2 is equal to 0. x is equal to 2. Or x minus 9 is equal to 0. x is equal to what? 9. So these are the values. Now, Lewis, when you get the, the, the values of x, you have to check. You have to put those values into the given uh, radical equation to check whether the values are satisfying the equation or not. Because there are some roots, there are some answers which do not satisfy the, 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 ori the original equations. Yes. And such roots are known as uh, extraneous roots. Extraneous. You see it? So if you see that a root or a given answer is not satisfying its original equation, then it's an extraneous root. Do you see it? Then, so that cannot be a solution. So even though you have had these two values, and eh, for s, we have to check. So you are going to check. Now, when s is equal to, let me just clean the side. Clean the side. So when x is equal to 2, if you put 2 here, this one will be 2 plus 7, that is 9. Square root of 9. Minus, when x is equal to 2, if you put 2 here, 3 times 2 will be 6. Minus 2. And that will be 4. Square root of 4. Are you seeing it? You have to look on the board. When you put 2 here, this one will be 2 plus 7. That is square root of 9. Now when you put 2 here, 3 times 2, that is 6 minus 2, square root of 4. Now square root of 9 is 3, minus square root of 4, 2, and this is 1. And you see the right hand side is equal to 1. So it means that this one is a solution. Now let's check the second one, the 9. That is equal to 9. If you put 9 here, and if you put 9 there, that will be 9 plus 7, that is square root of 16. Minus, when you put 9 here, 3 times 9 is 27, minus 2. Are you seeing it? And 27 minus 2 is uh, 25. Yes, 27 minus 2, 25. 
Now square root of 16 is 4 minus square root of 25, 5. 4 minus 5 is negative 1. And the right hand side is not negative 1. So this means that S is equal to 9. It's an extraneous root. It does not satisfy its original equation. Therefore, the solution to this question, this radical equation, you can see, so therefore, S is equal to 2. This is the acceptable answer. This is the, the root. Okay. Now, viewers, let's look at the second question and bring this lecture to an end. Let's look at it. So, the second question. So, we are done with the first one. This is the first one. We are done with this. So, let's look at the second one. So, solution to the second one. Solution. Two. Okay. So, we have it. We have it this way. Now, viewers, the second question can be solved the same way you solve the first one. But I want us to use a different approach. Yes. So that when the question is given to you, you can decide to use the first approach or this approach I'm going to share with you. Okay. So this one, let's look at it this way. This is a radical equation. So this is what you are going to do. You are going to take this one to the other side. So it's going to be square root of 3x plus 4 is equal to 1. When this one crosses, it will be positive plus square root of x plus 5. This way. I get it. Now, viewers, before we can square both sides, we have to introduce brackets so that this will, all, this will be one entity. This will, also be, this will also be one entity. So we are going to have something like square root of square root of 3x plus 4 all squared is equal to 1 plus square root of x plus 5 all squared. Are you it? Now, the square of square root of the whole of this will be 3x plus 4. Do you see the square, the, this square will cancel the square root? Yes. Because square root of this is the same as this is to the power half. So half times 2, this one will cancel this. So 3x plus 4, or which to the power 1 is the same as this. Now, here, if you are expanding this, this one will be 1 squared. Isn't it? Plus the square of this. Eh? The square of this. So this one will be x plus 5. Plus 2 times the product of these two. So plus 2 times the product of these two. And so 2 times square root of x plus 5. This way. I see it. And 1 squared is the same as 1. So we are going to have something like this. So 1 squared is the same as 1. So this is 1. Okay. Now let's bring the values here. All the, 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 the values and letters here to this side, or the variables to this side. So this one will be 3x plus 4. I think it's all in B this way. 3x. Then when this one comes here, that will be minus x. So that will be 2x. Now, 4, when this one crosses, or 1 plus 5 is 6. When 6, yes, 1 plus 5 is 6. When 6 crosses, which will be negative 6, 4 minus 6, it's negative 2. And this is equal to 2 root x plus 5. Yes, this is. Now, at this point, you can decide to divide 2 by 2. Eh, so that you get rid of this 2. So if you do that, then I'm going to have x minus 1. Eh, divide here by 2, here by 2. x minus 1 is equal to. And this, that 2 cancel this one. Square root of x plus 5. I see it. Now, at this point, you can say x minus 1 all squared is equal to square root of x plus 5 all squared. So that you can get rid of the square root sign. So this one is the same as x squared. Hmm, x squared. 
plus this times this will be neg uh, negative x times 2, so negative 2x plus is it negative 1 squared? That is 1. And this is equal to when you square this side, this one will be x plus 5. The square root sign will go. Now let's take everything to this side. This one will be x squared. Negative 2x. When this x crosses to negative x, you negative 3x. This is 1. When the 5 crosses, the equality sign it will be negative, uh, negative 5. So that will make it this one negative 4. Equal to 0. That is 1 minus 5. Yes. So that is this way. Now, do us. You want two numbers such that when you multiply them, you get negative 4. But when you add them, you get negative 3. Are you seeing So the numbers will be negative 4 and 1. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. So you attach s to this, attach s to this, and to x this way. So you are going to have x squared minus, so plus s, I just need minus 4x minus 4 equal to 0. You see that these two given as negative 3x. Okay. Now, this is x squared plus x to brackets minus 4x plus 4 equal to 0. So that when you expand the negative 1 times positive 4 will be negative. So you can make this side negative again. Negative negative will be positive, and here it's not positive. So it means that this one has to be positive. Here, yeah, common factor is x. x goes into x squared x. x goes into this one, 1. Minus here, common factor is 4. And this goes to x plus 1. Because it's 0. Are you seeing it? Now, so this one, this is a common factor. x plus 1. x plus 1. And then x minus 4. Because it's 0. So this means that I can clean this side. Okay, let me continue. So this means that s plus 1 is equal to 0. This implies s is equal to negative 1. Or x minus 4 is equal to 0. This implies that s is equal to 4. So we will say I've had two values for x. So let's go back to the original equation and check. Yes. Now when you put negative 1 here let's look at the negative 1 if, if you put negative 1 here that would be 3 times negative 1 that would be negative 3 plus 4 and that would be 1 square root of 1 is 1 minus when you put negative 1 here this one will be negative 1 plus 5 and that would be 4 square root of 4 is 2 1 minus 2 is negative 1 and this is not equal to 1 so this means that x equal to negative 1 is an extraneous root. Yes. Even though I've been able to obtain x equal to negative 1, it does not satisfy its original uh, equation. So it's an extraneous root and can therefore not be accepted as an answer or the root of this radical equation. Now let us move on to uh, x equal to 4. When you put 4 here, that will be 3 times 4. That is 12. Plus 4, 16. Square root of 16 is 4. Minus, when you put 4 here, 4 plus 5 is 9. Square root of 9 is 3. 4 minus 3 is equal to 1. Are you seeing it? And this is equal to 1. So it means that x equal to 4. So you can see that therefore, x is equal to 4 is the acceptable answer. That is the solution to this radical equation. x equal to negative 1 is an extraneous root and can therefore not be accepted. So viewers, this is the second approach. So I believe that if you have understood these two approaches, then solving radical equations should not be a problem to you at all. Thank you very much for your attention. For more of this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you have not done so.